Welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an upload. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Enjoy this week's show and don't forget to share it with all your friends. I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Ricky Mandel. And this week we're going to be looking at the biggest housing crash since the 2008 financial crisis. I don't know whether you guys realise this, but we are in the biggest housing crash since 2008. Were you aware of this, Ricks? I wasn't aware of it, actually, until I started reading your screen. Yeah, well, I've been making some notes, you see. See, uh, Nationwide do a house price index, which basically looks at the different house prices across across the UK. And what they've said is, last month in July, the annual house price dropped down to minus 3.8%. Now, this is the biggest decline in house prices since July uh, 2009. Uh, oh, wow. So we're talking like quite a long time here. Now, just to put this into a bit of perspective, it's 4.5% down from the house, house peak in August 2022. So back in August last year, the average house price in the UK was 273,751. Right now, the average house price in the UK is 260,828. Now, of course, that's the UK as an average. So it does depend on what areas you're investing in. So for example, the Midlands hasn't been hit too bad. So in the East Midlands, we've only seen a 1.1% drop. And in the West Midlands, it's been a 1.9% drop. But then other areas will even it out. So uh, East Angular is a 4.7% drop. The Northwest, if you've got houses in Manchester or Liverpool, we've got a 4.4% drop. So it's been a pretty significant drop in the last year. So first of all, I suppose, why is that? Why have we had a sudden drop, a, the biggest drop since 2009? Well, I suppose the elephant in the room that we're all aware of is interest rates, right? Interest rates have absolutely skyrocketed in recent times. So right now, the average mortgage interest you're looking at what about 6.5 percent yeah 6.5 percent now a couple of years ago the average mortgage interest rate was only 1.95 right so it's absolutely gone through the roof in the last couple of years see when i started by the way when we talk about interest rates when i started in property i i didn't know what determined the interest rate. I didn't because I, I we I've heard of base rate when I started, but I didn't yeah. understand what the difference is between base rate and then the interest rate that you'd pay when you get um, a mortgage. So what is the difference between what is ba- what is the base rate and why does that have an impact on what the interest rates are? So base rate is what the Bank of England sets the interest rate at, and of course if that goes up, the mortgage rates are going to go up as well. So base rate has been super super low. Now to be fair, and we've talked about this before, to be fair, over the last sort of 20 years, interest rates have been lower than they've ever been. So when I was born, interest rates were about 14, 15%, which was super, super high. They've gone really low now. Oh, that so was a very long time ago. <laughs> that was a very long time ago. Have we got any recent ago. figures within the last kind of 50 years? <laughs> <laughs> But in the, last, uh, in the last sort of 20 years, they've been, they've been really low. And base rate has been as low as like 0.25%. That's crazy, isn't it? It's just gone up to 5.25%. Now, I've got a property at the moment, and my interest rates are low because I've got a fixed interest rate. Uh, so I'm paying £799 a month on the mortgage. 799 799 I've been paying 799 for years. However, in November, my interest my fixed period runs out. So in November, I'm going to have to go on to a new interest rate. So I'm paying 799 right now. What do you think my mortgage is going to be when when I remortgage in November? I'm guessing it will be around maybe 1,300, 1,400. Very close, yes. It's about 1,300. So it's going to go up about 500 pounds. Now for me, that's not really a problem because I'm, re- I'm doing it a service accommodation, I'm making it over a grand a month anyway. So are you gonna fix the interest, interest or are you gonna do it on a variable? Well, so I'm speaking to the broker at the moment, there's kind of three options that I could do. So one, I could go on a tracker mortgage, and right. the tracker mortgage basically looks at the Bank of England's interest rates, and if that goes up, your mortgage goes up. If that goes down, your mortgage goes down. But it's a bit more expensive now. 
another option is I could fix for two years or I could fix for five years. Now the interesting thing is, normally, um, no normally it works the other way, but fixing for five years is actually more expensive. Sorry, no, it's cheaper. Fixing for five years is actually cheaper than fixing for two, which to me suggests that they know that they are going to come back down again. Yeah. So I'm not super worried. I'm okay. The people I'm worried about are all, there's, there's, there's over a million people who are in the same position as me, except for it's their personal home and their interest rates are going to go through the roof and suddenly they're going to have to pay £500 more or whatever they're it is the one, They're the ones paying the mortgage, not a tenant. Not a tenant. Now, I've got someone renting it a service accommodation, so I'm okay because I'm making a, over a grand a month anyway. So, okay, I'm going to make £500 less. Boo-hoo on this one deal. Is there a limit on what the most the base rate could be? Is there a little, like, is there a, 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 you know, a bit of information where it's like, right, it, w it will never go above this much? Um, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine it going crazy anytime soon, but we spoke to about this before, didn't we, about how in certain countries it's like a hundred and something percent. Yeah. And their, their economy is just totally messed up. So I don't think there's a, there's a limit, not that I'm aware of. Um, but I don't think it's going to change too much. I do think mortgages will come down. The fact that they're allowing you to fix it for five years and that that's cheaper than fixing it for two yeah. would suggest that everyone thinks it's going to come down. We know that uh, inflation is looking like it's coming down. So I don't think it's too bad for us as property investors. In fact, we'll move on later, in, in, uh, later about some of the opportunities that are actually going to be presented to property investors. The people that are in trouble are the people who've got their own house and the interest rate's suddenly about to go up like crazy and they can't afford, and, and to compound all this as well, wages are going down. Mm. Because wages are staying the same, but inflation's going up. So money's being worthless. So wages are going down, they're having to pay more on the houses, and we've already seen repossessions in the UK this quarter have gone up 24% based on this time last year. So what's happening is people are not able to afford their, ho their homes, not able to afford their mortgages, and houses are getting repossessed. And there's 1.6 million more homeowners that, that are in fixed terms at the moment, but they're about to be in the situation where their fixed term runs out, their mortgage goes up, and they're going to be in big trouble. Now, the government obviously doesn't want this to happen. You know, they don't want loads of people to get their homes repossessed. So Jeremy Hunt has brought in some mortgage measures to try and protect. Um, Samuel was speaking to a mortgage broker and he touched on this on one of his YouTube videos recently. And he was saying about how they're going to allow people to switch to interest-free mortgages for six months, right? Without penalty. So if their if they're repayment mortgage is at the moment and then the interest goes up, but then they allow them to switch to interest-free, that means their payments will hopefully fall back down. Well, they have to pay the interest at some point. Is it they're like still paying the interest. That they're, they're getting a break from paying the repayments. Right. Yeah. Oh, um, so they're paying interest only for six months and then they start paying the repayments. Yeah. Or the other thing that, that Jeremy Hunt said as well, as well as that, is that he'll allow people to extend their mortgages. So let's say you've had a mortgage and you've got 10 years left on it. They'll allow you to extend it for, say, to 20 years, which will, which will the then month, reduce yeah. the payments as well. So there are things that they're doing. However, I still think that there are going to be people here that are really, really struggling. And I think there are a lot of investors as well. Although, although the house prices have dropped a bit, what's really dropped is, is buyers. There's been less movement. Less people have been putting their houses for sale. Less people have been buying. It's down about 20% what it was this time last year. Which is why, if you, I don't know if you found this, but when you're going out looking for properties, you'll see that there are people who are willing to take quite a big discount. Oh, yeah. That wasn't happening. I remember, I remember when we were talking about deal sourcing a couple of years ago, and it was like, man, it's so hard to find anyone that's willing to take less than five grand yeah. off the asking price, because I'm going in, I'm offering the asking price, and they're like, well, it's all right, someone's already offered 20 grand above the asking price. Yeah. How long ago was I remember that? just after the pandemic, that was the case. Yeah. When we came out of the pandemic, it was like, it was, I, I remember trying to book viewings on properties, and I'd book a viewing in for like, you know, three days later. But then I'd receive a phone call from the agent saying, 
cancel the viewing because we, we've sold it now. Yeah. It was going, they were going that quick. Or, or you'd book a viewing and they'd be like, yeah, we'll book you in then. We're doing a group viewing. Yeah. There'll be 50 of you. <laughs> one of them's already bid above the asking price, <laughs> yeah. uh, but you're more than welcome to come along. One of them's a, a regular investor that will probably buy it from us anyway. Yeah. But come along. Yeah, that's, that's true, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So with all this being said, as property investors, uh, I think there's two big lessons that we can, or, or two big actions, I suppose, that we, that we should be taking right now. First thing, and you probably guys all, all know this quote, but Warren Buffett says that it's wise for investors to be fearful whenever they're greedy, and greedy whenever there's a vehicle. So the fact that the market's dipped, the fact that house prices are dipping, the fact that no one's buying right now, what does that suggest the vast bulk of the market are right now? Fearful, right? Because no one's wanting to buy, because they're worried house prices might come down, interest rates might go up. So I do think this is a very good opportunity to buy a property and to be looking for property, for, to be getting bargains, to be doing BRRs, things like and that. Is it, this is interesting because when you, if, if you say to someone, the market's crashing right now, so you should be looking at bar refurbished finances, most people would go, well, hold on a minute. If the house prices are going down, why would I look at bar refurbished refinance? But it's such a great opportunity. Yeah. Because, and it goes back to the point you said earlier. People are willing to take um, a discounted price because they want to sell quick before it crashes even more. And where we make our money with bar refurbished finance is getting a below market value deal and forcing the value of the house back up. Yeah, and, and it might be, it might be that if you buy a house right now to do as a BRR, it might be that you can't refinance it in six months, but it might be that in two years, it's massively gone up, for example, right? So we, people tend to buy, people, when, when, when something's going up, people see it going up and they're like, oh, I want to buy that because it's, it's going up. And people are often scared to buy when they see it coming down, but actually it's the people that buy it when it's down that make the money, because yeah. we know it's going to go back up again. Yeah. It's down right now, so that means it's a good time to buy. Yeah. Uh, also, lease options. This is this is this is going to be my, my next point. Go on. Right? Go on. So you're excited about. I'm this excited one, about this tell. one. I'm excited about this one because all, there are going to be people. And we mentioned this earlier. 20, uh, 24 percent repossessions have gone up already, right? This quarter, and we know there are loads more people that are going to be in trouble as well. That is a bad situation. However. As a property entrepreneur, and that's what we are, we're property entrepreneurs, property investors, we're also entrepreneurs. As an entrepreneur, your job is to solve a need. So when there's a need, if you can solve the need, you'll, you'll, you'll get paid, right? So it's not taking advantage of people, you're helping people if you can offer a, a lease option because all these people with house prices dropping, there's a good chance that they're gonna be in what? Negative equity. Negative, what, do you wanna explain very quickly what negative equity is? Yeah, so, so let, for, let's say for example, someone's bought their house, um, a few years ago, and they bought it for 100 grand. Now there's been a crash. The house might be now worth 70 grand. But they've got a mortgage, and they've got an outstanding loan on the property, which they got the loan to value at 100,000 pounds. So now the loan on the property is more than what the actual value of the house is. So they can't sell it, because they need to sell it for 100 grand to be able to pay back the mortgage. So, but it's not worth that now, because it's crashed. So yeah. they're stuck. So they're stuck. Well, they're, normally, if you're a negative equity like that, it means you can't sell. Yeah. Right? So it means you've got to hold on to it. That might not be a problem. No. You might just think, oh, well, I can't sell. Damn it, I'll hold on to it until it goes up. But what about if you were in negative equity and you couldn't afford your mortgage repayments? Now you can't sell, you can't refinance because you're in negative equity, and you can't afford, you're screwed. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get repossessed, right? So as property entrepreneurs, we should be looking for these people and like you said, offering them a lease option because they are stuck and we could be saving people from, go, from not only make, we'll obviously make money from, the, from it as well, but we'll also be saving people from getting repossessed. It's good business. It's, good, it's a win-win. It is a win-win. We're, we're helping people by you know, paying their, pay, helping them pay their mortgages. They've still got the house for now. They've got, you know, we, and here's another thing with lease options. You can be creative with them. Go on, let's hear, let's hear your, your, crea your creative juices flowing. So a straightforward lease option, Yeah. because there's different types of options. So, you know, you often hear lease options, Samuel talked about lease options all the time. In fact, that's how Samuel got started in property. His first house was um, bought create, we were speaking about this, I think a few weeks ago, yeah. with um, lease option agreements. And it was a similar situation. Yeah, it was. Because the, the guy had bought the house, it had dropped in value, 
He could have afforded to keep it, but he did not want to be, he bought it for his son and he didn't want to be a landlord anymore. So he was, again, he felt trapped. Yeah. In the same way, not as bad as what the people are like now, but still trapped, he didn't want it. So Samuel comes in, offers to buy it off him, takes over the mortgage payments. Here's a question for you then. If you're doing a le- if, if they can't afford the mortgage, why would you be able to afford the mortgage? Because you would rent it out creatively. So you could have, let's say there's a four bedroom house, the landlord's sick and tired of it. They want to sell it, but they're not going to get what they want because they're negative equity. Four bedroom house with two reception rooms. You could offer them a lease option and you could say, hey, I'll pay you a monthly lease of a thousand pounds a cover month. Their, cover their mortgage. Cover their mortgage, the whatever crap. it may be. Um, and then you can rent it out yourself on a room by room basis. Now, some people would say, but the landlord could just do that. Mm. Well, when we offer a lease option, this is one of the things, this is the way that we train and we, the way we teach people to get lease options is actually before you go to offer the lease option, you actually tell the landlord what they, what they could do. Why don't you rent it out, landlord? Why don't you put it on with a different agency? Why don't you keep it and put it on with a different management uh, company, rent it out as a HMO and make a thousand pounds profit yourself? So what would you do there if you found someone, right? They got a big four bed house and they're struggling to rent it out and you went to them and said, why don't you rent it out as a HMO? And they went, oh, never thought of that. Thanks, Ricks, and rent it out as a HMO. I'd go, darn it. I was only joking. No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I would say, fair enough. Do you want me to um, put you in touch with a good HMO manager in the area? So you'd be happy to, you'd be able to lose the deal in order to help them out? Absolutely. What, explain why. Because I believe that everything comes back full circle. I believe that um, we are <laughs> farmers, not hunters. So we throw seeds, we help people, and it will come back round to, to, to you know, feed us at some point. You know, so I, I think Samuel, remember Samuel telling the story of some a very similar situation where he had, there was someone that he was going to view a house, he was going to view their house, and he offered them, you know, below, below market value, he offered them to put it on with a different agency, they said no to both of them, but he, when he said about renting it out, they did rent it out. Fast forward a few years, they were trying to sell their house and they couldn't. And they, but they needed to sell it because they needed the money. Now, because Samuel had built a relationship with them and he helped them a few years ago by going and putting them in touch with a management company, when they wanted to sell it and they needed it off their hands, the first person they contacted was Samuel. And they gave Samuel a good offer, uh, a good uh, price for the property because they needed it on quick and Samuel got a below market value deal from that. And that all came from him helping them years before by putting them in touch with a HMO management company. That's good. That's really good. I agree with you, by the way. I, I think some people wouldn't. Some people would try and take it. But I, I think it makes sense. For me, if I'm selling, I always want to sell something to somebody yeah. where I think it's a win for them. Yeah. That's how I want to do business. So I, I also I, think as well, if you're you know, a, a property entrepreneur and investor and you're used in the toolbox of strategies like lease options and rent to rent and you're doing deal sourcing, if you go to meet a landlord who's in negative equity and you help them, what's to say that they... Well, you know, they'll, they'll like you and they want to buy more houses. Let's say they won't contact you to become a deal sourcer for them. Yeah, it's true. So I, that's why I believe it all comes back full circle. Building relationships as well. Absolutely. All right, so go on then. You, you were just about to tell me about some creative strategies that you could do in the current market right now with lease options. Yeah, so the straightforward lease option um, that we, you know, that most people would, would probably hear about would be pay a lease on the, on the property. Um, take it off the landlord, rent it out yourself, make a bit of profit and then buy it in the future. I know you're doing this a lot at the moment as well, especially with land, is forcing the value up by getting like planning gains. Yeah. So finding pieces of land, um, because with land and land prices, really whatever happens in the economy and inflation and property prices, it doesn't, if the land's not got planning permission, it doesn't really affect the land because a bit of land without planning permission is about as, it's, it's about as expensive as an expensive piece of carpet. Yeah. So if the, um, it, let's say property prices are going up or they're going down, doesn't matter. If you find land that has got no planning permissions and you know how to get planning permission, you know how to do the due diligence, see if you'll get a good chance to get it, and you offer an option agreement, which an option, a purchase option compared to a lease option is a lease option is where you'll pay the landlord a monthly fee with the option to buy. A purchase option, you don't pay a monthly fee, but you'll often put down a small deposit, which is non-refundable. You would apply for planning permission. If you don't get planning permission, you lose your your deposit. However, if you do, then you um, have the option to buy the land afterward at the the true market value that it's at with the planning, um, with your deposit knocked off that price. 
So it's a great way to do it. Anyone that's you know looking at getting into property and there, maybe some people are very fearful of what's happening right now. I know we said there's opportunities. It's not just houses that you could be looking at with lease options. It's also land, commercial units. Like you're doing a lot of land at the moment with exactly what I've just said. I am, and also getting lease options on things like we've got lease options on a hotel. Yeah. We're working on at the moment. Uh, I, I think networking will be a really good way of finding people as well. You're going networking because even if even if the people you're networking with aren't in that situation, they probably know someone yeah. who's struggling or who's looking to sell. There's a lot of people out there. Yeah, and there's there's networking, also sending letters. Yeah. Sending letters. You know, there's all different kinds of ways that you can do it. Well, I think the main thing, if you're looking to, you know, speak to landlords that are in negative negative equity and that need the help, it's about putting yourself in the right rooms and positioning yourself in front of people that need the help. You've got to identify what the problem is and you need to have the skills to be able to solve the problem, position yourself in front of these landlords and see if you can help. And if uh, you can help... A lot of them will be homeowners as well. It's not just landlords. Yeah. It's just people that own their own home. Yeah, it would. And I, I know people that right now that are very scared because of what you, you know, the whole thing we've just spoken about with interest rates. People are so fearful at the moment. Yeah. And rightfully so, because if you, like that one you said with the five, going up by 500 pounds, if you're paying... If you have a full-time job and you've got a property and you're paying your mortgage and it goes up by, and you've got enough just to get by, that £500 extra a month is going to cripple you. Yeah. So, with that being said then, we think it's a good opportunity. Yeah. Obviously, it is, it, we do think it's a, there's, there's a crash, a housing crash. Yeah. How bad do you think, you know, get your crystal ball out here. Okay. How bad do you think the, this crash is going to be? It's fallen, it's, it's the most it's fallen since 2009 in a month in a given month, right? I know it's the annual figure, but in a month. Do you think it's gonna continue dropping? Do you think they're gonna absolutely bottom out? Where, how low do you think they'll go? Do you think it will, it will steady out, be a bit of a soft landing? Do you think they'll go up again quickly? Uh, what are your thoughts? I, do, I, I, think, I think they will go up again pretty quick and pretty soon. And the reason for that is because I think as soon as the interest rates start to drop, I think then people start, I think people will then start buying again. Yeah. Also, I, I think so too. I don't think they're going to drop s super low. I think that the, we already know that although interest rates might continue going up this year, we know they're predicted to come down yeah. a, a lot in the next couple of years after that. So I think that will have an impact. Do you also think as well, with interest rates being really high at the moment, like 6%, do you think like if they drop to, let's say they come down to 3 4%, do you think people will be like, fuck? It's an absolute bargain. Yeah, because they're quite they're, because they're so high at the moment. I think we get used to what I think we get used to what we're at very very quickly. Yeah, I think everything becomes normal. I mean, just look at COVID. Yeah, everyone's talking about the new. Oh, it's the new normal. It's the new normal now. Can't go next to you. We wouldn't be able to sit this close, Rick. No, we'll be at one side of the stage each. Everyone's like, oh, it became really normal. But then when it went away, now it's really weird. That it was like that, and now this is really normal again. Yeah. I think we're very adaptable as humans. I think we get used to stuff very, very quickly. So I think when they drop down, I'm not sure if they'll drop down to what they have been for the last 20 years, though. What do you think they'll drop to? I don't know. I, I'm not. I mean, traditionally, you know, outside of this this sort of little time we're talking about, mortgage rates have been sort of like you know five percent. You know, that's not that. It's not that high. We've, been, you know, we've been used to really, really low. Um, so I'm not sure if it will. I do think it will come down. Now I think it will steady out. I think we're on a small island here in the UK. Properties are in high demand. We all need houses to live in. Uh, people love investing in property. I still think it's a good time to invest in. In fact, I think it's a great time to invest in property right now. Um, so I don't think they're going to go super low. But I think, you know, maybe the next year or so they might drop some more, and, yeah. and then I think they'll go back up. And we know through history. It's like when you buy anything, any investment, it always goes up and it goes down, right? So, you know, we have, you, have, you have peaks, you have troughs, and that's just how investing works. That's how the economy works. It dropped in 2008 and everyone was saying, oh my goodness, it's terrible. The days of property investing are over. But after that, it then went back up again. Yeah. And we're always going to go through that. So I'm not, I'm not worried about it, but I do think it's an opportunity. I mean, I'll, I'll end with a really good quote if you want. Because I know we love our, my, my quotes at the end of the podcast. Well, you say that we love I think you love them, but yeah, go on. I do. Go on. Are you ready for this one? Let's hear it. Okay, you ready for this? I don't know who said it, but in the... Someone once said. Someone once said. Yeah. Don't... Hold on. <laughs> you forgot it, haven't you? No, I haven't forgotten it. Are you ready? Go on, go on. Okay. 
Don't wait to buy property. Buy property and wait. I can't believe that you couldn't think of that. That's the mo- How that's, did that that's, take so that's long the point, to come to mind? That's mind? the point where you're meant to go, my name's Russell Leeds, so we're going to have to do that bit again. <laughs> All right, go on then. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You forgot it again. No, it's, it's a bit confusing, <laughs> isn't it? Right, hold on, let me it's get, not confusing. No, because if I get it wrong, then everyone oh, watching this is going to be like, oh, Don't wait it? to buy property. Buy property and wait. But now you've just stolen my thunder. Oh, you do that. Don't wait to buy property. Buy property and wait. Very profound. I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Ricky Mandel. See you next week.